again. You know how people look to that goofy little groundhog in February to predict the weather for the rest of, well, the next six weeks? We always look to our first fishing trip of the year to predict what the rest of the fishing season is going to be like. And I'll tell you, it's going to be phenomenal. We hit the first clear, warm day in about a week off of uh, Benton Harbor St. Joe, the nuclear power plant down there. We fished with Captain Nichols and his big perch party boat going for salmon fishing, still fishing techniques. It was a beautiful day. We got lots of fish. We're going to tell you the whole story, and I'll tell you, fishing season 1991 looks great. So stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. The boat is the Captain Nichols perch party boat, usually docked in South Haven, but today it's at the municipal dock at St. Joe, down here for an experimental trip for spring trout and salmon that are in close to shore, feeding on smelt at this time of year. Now, while Captain Don is the man who started this perch party boat operation, his son Donnie is running this boat. Donnie has been down here fishing from a smaller boat, doing quite well on these salmon, and he thought that his boat, the big boat he normally only is used for perch fishing would work for spring salmon off the Cook nuclear plant where salmon are bunched up around the hot water discharge. Pier fishermen do well on April and brown trout and salmon here off the St. Joe break walls. Small boats troll with downriggers and more successfully with planer boards to catch these fish in the shallow water close to shore where they can be pretty spooky. Now you can see the slick water. That's the warm water discharge, nine miles south of St. Joe. We're fishing off the Cook Nuclear Power Plant. They take in Lake Michigan water, run it through the power plant to cool the generating equipment, and it goes back into Lake Michigan quite a bit warmer. In fact, the surface temperature where we were fishing was 12 degrees warmer than the surrounding water. Now this attracts fish, and the crew on the Captain Nichols showed us how to wrap spawn on our single hooks. Taking the go around here like this, just a few wraps, like so. Actually, you don't need that much thread, but that. that'll do it just like that. You don't have on to spawn it or anything. No, it'll, it'll hold itself on there. Jack Murray from Battle Creek and Dottie started with spawn instead of night crawlers and cast towards that boiling mass of warm water which we anchored next to. Now the basic method isn't all that complicated. Here's the rig we're using here right next to all this warm water discharge. Just have a sinker, a drop sinker off a three-way swivel. Using for salmon, of all things, a worm, a night crawler. Just hooked, uh, well, once through the collar. And be given an underhand cast. Reason for the, I tried an overhand cast and lost the worm and the sinker on my first. Just give it a little toss. And just like fishing for, heaven forbid the comparison, suckers. <laughs> Very similar. Just waiting for him to, to grab that worm and go. Now we got several people using spawn on the boat. I think most of the, most of the folks are using spawn. Seems a little more dignified than using worms for salmon. Well, believe it or not, worms will work. But the fellas in this boat really did well using dead smelt for bait. In fact, they did so well that they'd caught their limit early and they were just fishing for the fun of it. So this little salmon is turned loose. On our boat, guess who caught the first one? Okay. Hey, this one was nibbling. <laughs> what? I it better not be somebody else down here. I'm going to be upset. No, I swear it's a fish. Here we go. No. No? Yes, it's on. It's, uh, it's going right under the boat. Do we see it yet? Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, look it's at that. Brown. What is it? Looks like is that a brown? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Oh, yay! Right. Oh, what a thrill, what a All thrill. Yeah, right. right. Yes. <laughs> oh, be doggone, a brown trout. This one was nibbling. I mean, I, was, I, don't I just, just had one knock the end of my, my uh, worm off over there. Took a nice hit. Nice. That is. That is yeah. nice. Okay. Oh, yes. We'll get some ice and put him in a bucket. Oh, I'm pretty pleased with this. 
Yes, sir. Well, John, should I throw it back, John? <laughs> you want me to throw it no, back? It's about this. 29 and a half inches long. I think I should throw it back, huh? Yeah, right. No, this is a keeper. This would be a good eating one. Look at that. You can tell it's a, a trout. One little tip here, it has a white mouth on it and sharp teeth. Yeah, it swallowed the, swallowed the hook. They do have sharp teeth. Well, once I broke the ice, other anglers started catching these little trout and salmon. Now, they're not big right now, but I tell you, they're fun to catch. There we go. There he is. Oh! Wait, if you can get him in here pretty quick, because I'm just about out of shape. Okay, here we go. You got a net? Yeah, we got it. Way to go, Jack. Way to go. Looks <laughs> like a little brown. Well, I'm sorry that's not as big as mine, Jack. Good job. There, I don't Jack. think it is. That's a word for you. Well, for most of us, these were the first open water rod and reel fish of the year. Oh, here's Captain Don Sr., who has one hooked, at least for a short time. What, you lost yours? Yeah. Oh, Pop lost up. his. <laughs> it's all up to you. Now, what's the technique? Look, we got one on that other boat, too. Yeah. John, just, just tilt up at the Starcraft over there. Look at that. Well, this is the kind of fishing you uh, said we'd get. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. You know, this, this is your dad's and your lucky day because I'm going to fish right between you now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least you got the first one. Tell me I don't know how to pick a fishing spot. Yeah. Right. No, they're, they're still reefing on that one over there. They got a big noodle rod. This is traditionally a small boat type of fishery, but here we were with a 60-foot party boat anchored like we were fishing perch, but catching coho and brown trout. How's that compared to a uh, perch? Down. As far as eating or as far as catching? Yeah, as far as eating. Uh, they're about the same. This time here with the cold water, they're real good. And as far as catching, they're a lot more fun. <laughs> more action. Yeah. Well, they still got that one over there. They're yeah. on that one. Yeah, he said he got a 21-pound brown last weekend. He's fishing with smelt. Dead smelt? Yeah, dead smelt. Oh, yeah. It's... There it is. He told me he had his limit of browns by 7 o'clock this morning. He's just been catching and releasing all the line. Is he using light line, you know? Yeah, they're using probably 6, 8 pound test with a long oh, rod. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty more out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get them doing good here. And we did. They hit consistently all morning long. Oh, why it's performing miraculously. Look at that. Oh, terrific. This was, I, I was reeling in. It was almost at the boat, and it came up and hit it. Oh, super. Super. My second. Look at that. Oh, coho. There we go. Yeah. Whoa. Whoops. <laughs> Yep, right came, came, came right off. You think you have any places up towards South Haven where you'll be able to do this? Uh, our power plant doesn't put out as much warm water as this one. If the, Once the coho start running up there and we get the schools just going through, I think I'm going to go out and try drifting with the schools and mm -hmm. try this type of fishing. Right it ought to work. Now how will you do that, drifting with the schools? Try to locate a school on the graph right. or what? Just look for a warm water pocket. Yeah, like here, coho. the water's 10 degrees warmer than our last spot over there. And once you find that, you see some bait fish or some fish on there and just try to maneuver the boat over the school and try to drift along with them. Hmm. I think once you get the fish under the boat with all the people out and all the bait, that they'll stay right there. Yeah, they, they seem to, to run in streaks. We right. get three or four together. And... That's the way it worked the last uh, weekends I was down here. You get three or four and then it stopped for 10, 15 minutes and then you get back into them again. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest you've caught down here? Oh, probably five, six pound coho. Mm -hmm. When will the perch start up? Everybody's going to ask that. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start running in May, and we always get a few then. They say the perch fishing down here is, once the coho go, that it's excellent all year round down here. Uh, hopefully in May, we should get them going. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't catch any perch today, but 
Kathy Beitler did bring in a white fish. This one will be good eating. Maybe if we had dead smelt, we would have caught more. But our Outdoors Foundation board of directors and friends managed to catch 30 fish. These salmon and trout weren't monsters, but I'll tell you, they'll taste as good as salmon and trout can get. Our experiment on the Captain Nichols worked like a charm. April 2nd was a bluebird day, but it's chilly on the water, so we had to stay bundled up. I did manage to catch a few winks in the heat of the sun, and John Ford even put down the camera to catch a brown trout. And for those of you who watched last week, no, he didn't throw this one back. Those fish we caught off the nuclear plant, well, they were small fish. They'll get bigger as time goes on, but they're also what we call the glamour species, the trout and salmons. There's a lot of fish that are caught around the country. They're big fish, they fight good, people are proud of them, they're trophies in their own right, and even though they're not glamour fish, we put them in our trophy book. Cute little Sandra Jane Roberts from Ferndale caught a fish from Lake St. Clair that's an oddball species. It's a moon eye, 14 inches long, trophy size for a moon eye. In fact, that's the best picture of one I've seen. Smaller than a lake whitefish, this is a Menominee whitefish, almost 17 inches long. Ken Rathke from Traverse City caught it in late October off the Frankfurt Pier. Now here's another Menominee whitefish of identical size, also off Frankfurt. This one in early April by John Travis from Okemos. Now do you think you can recognize a Menominee? Now is this one? Nope, that is a hog sucker, noted by its huge snuffleupagus mouth. Richard Mackey caught this one from the St. Joe River on spawn at 16 inches, two pounds, one ounce. It's a new state record hog sucker. This species of sucker has a much smaller mouth. It's a common white sucker. A 20 incher is a big one. It was caught by Harold Bowler Jr. from Saginaw fishing the Rifle River in early April. Whoa, look at this, a freshwater drum, or sheep's head as they're called. Mitch Bartig from Fowlerville caught this unusually large one off the Frankfurt Pier in Lake Michigan. It was 25 inches long, weighed eight pounds. In the carp category, Ed Masson Jr. from Dearborn is holding a whopper. Three feet long, 23 and a half pounds. He speared it in Jackson County's Mud Lake in June. Jim Kowalski from Inkster caught this 37 inch, 29 pound carp on a dough ball from Portage Lake in Washtenaw County. Here's a nice size channel cat, 10 pounds, 27 inches. Harold Kane from Mayville caught it on a crawler in Saginaw Bay. Mesa Day Lake produced this 13 pound channel cat for David Roberts from Ferndale. The fish even looks bigger with his daughter holding it. And here's a 16 pound channel cat, a whopper, caught by Margaret Williams from Traverse City. She was fishing Lake Leelanau with a Lindy rig. And we don't have a picture of Myrna Welsh's 11 pound channel cat, but she has a good story. Yeah, I wasn't even fishing for a channel cat. My husband, Jerry, he was fishing for channel cat using leeches. He's catching all the fish, little bitty ones. And I figured, well, I'm gonna go to a Cleo because I wasn't catching nothing. I want to catch a salmon. And when I latched onto that thing, I said, all right, I got my salmon and it billowed up in the water and I was just so tickled and Jerry kept saying, it doesn't look like a salmon, hon. I said, well, it is, it's a big fish. You know, it's gotta be a salmon. I get it up there and it's a big channel cat. And I look at it, I don't care, it's a big fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I care. So you really weren't disappointed? No, I wasn't disappointed. And then when we got up to the bank, a man from the state was checking all the fish and he says, what have you got? I said, I got a big fish and I was so happy. And he went and he looked at it and he says, well, you better register this. And I said, nah. He says, well, it looks like it would be a, a winner, you know, and take it up there. He didn't even have his scales or nothing. He said, stay here, I'll run home, I'll go get him. He had to go all the way home, come back and get his scales and weigh it and everything, and that's why I'm here. All this happened to Myrna Lou Welsh from Sumner on the UP's Manistique River. And for such a good fishing tale, we'll make her our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Channel Cat Angler of the Week. I know a lot of people were excited about our wild game dinner on April 13th in Lansing, the Royal Scott Golf Course. Well, we had that planned. We had to cancel it last week because the public health department came in and they said, you can't hold this dinner. No way, shape, or form would they let us hold this dinner. Well, 
Charlie Keenan has been digging into this, finding out, I mean, is this repercussions because of the DNR investigations I've been doing or what? Well, he's been checking it out. We are interviewing a public health official tomorrow. We're going to come up with a, a whole feature here on Wild Game Dinners next week. But believe me, it's gotten tricky. The public health department would like to shut Wild Game Dinners down. And they did nail ours. So at least our one on April 13th. What's the future hold? We'll have to find that out next week. Now, Representative Tom Alley has been holding, well, he held one hearing, and he has several coming up about splitting the DNR. Let's go to Tom Alley right now and find out what the scoop is on these hearings. Our first committee meeting, we'll be bringing some people in who are what we would call some experts, uh, some expert testimony to come in and say uh, from different groups. And in fact, you'll be invited to come to and testify to give us some information about why they think it should be uh, split or changed or whatever, okay, to get the ball rolling. Uh, we don't really need a thousand people there to uh, kick this thing off. You don't need a rally at we this We don't point. need it. Not, not now. Uh, I think later at some point in time we will, but not now. And uh, then in, uh, when we come back from the Easter break uh, in April uh, 16th, we're having a meeting at the uh, Library of Michigan using their large auditorium. And at that time, we're having the first report that I know of that will be the history of the Department of Natural Resources presented. We're having booklets done on the history of DNR, how it started, all the changes that took place, and where, they, and where they're at today. And I think it's going to be a really informative meeting. So people on that day may want to show up, or they may write to my office and ask for a copy of that booklet, which is going to give the history of DNR. That will be the really beginning to get into the uh, uh, guts of things. And then we're going on uh, what I call the road show. We're going down into Lynn Owens District. We're going to Jerry Bartson's district. We'll be having a uh, hearing, a uh, public hearing at a gymnasium probably here in the Lansing area. Uh, we're going to be going, in my district, we're going to be up in my district for hearing. We're going across the state uh, from one end to the other to hear from people who really care. As long as we know those dates and times. We'll have those to you. You'll be hooked up with our audience, <laughs> and I'm sure there'll be lots of people turning out. Now, speaking of wild game dinners and things like this, if you're hungry like I am, let's get on to this great recipe from a Canadian viewer. Curly Kelleher sent us a recipe for Brunswick squirrel stew, and it's an ideal recipe for any kind of stew or soup because it all goes in one pot. I wonder if they have, they must have squirrels up in New Brunswick. Yeah, apparently. And this recipe, you're going to boil the squirrel uh, first so that it'll come off the bones, but you're going to add tomatoes to the pot while it's boiling oh, rather than boiling. afterwards, hmm. right, so that it just kind of goes all through the meat. Now, really, a lot of squirrels that are taken by hunters are young squirrels, and they don't really need to be parboiled because right. squirrel meat can be so excellent that just fried. Right, but this one we didn't know, so we went ahead and did it this way. Take them off the bones right. and, and put the meat <laughs> back it. in yep. and then with that tomato. Everything just goes back all into one pot. You're going to fry some bacon first, and you do want to save some of the grease because you're going to saute some vegetables, and then you're also going to add some of the grease back to the pot. Hmm. Now, you wouldn't need to do this. You would not need to add the two tablespoons of bacon grease to the soup if you didn't want to. Oh, but, but you know, it gives it such a great it's flavor. It's just for flavor, right. Oh, what a great flavor. <laughs> and you're going to saute the vegetables in bacon grease what also. Was potatoes? Potatoes, celery, and onions. Mm -hmm. And then there you're going to add your two tablespoons of bacon grease. Hmm. And if you're watching cholesterol or anything, this is where you wouldn't need to add it. And then your crumbled bacon, of course. Mm. A little bit of salt and pepper. Well, that makes it unique with it that does. bacon in there. But you know, Bob Garner is going to, oh, more it's vegetables? Some vegetables, right. But no noodles. He's mm. going to beef about that. Oh, I don't think so. Well, he always has before. If he doesn't now, I'm going to be surprised. Hey, this recipe doesn't need noodles. Oh, yeah? Oh, no. This recipe, do, I, I'm sure it would be enhanced if you put them in for crying out loud, but, but this recipe does, this has got, number one, it's got spuds in it. Mm -hmm. Michigan potatoes in it. That, that makes it delicious, but, but uh, and this is perfect. This is perfect. I love squirrel. And this squirrel is so tender it and is. so nice. It, but I'll bet you in this recipe, even old squirrels would be tender and tender and nice. Yeah, because they'd boil up good. Absolutely delicious, fresh, perfectly seasoned. <laughs> the broth uh, is great. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever had anything like it. That was the last of your squirrel. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was the last piece. <laughs> hey, I'm fishing this squirrel out on purpose. I'll tell you, <laughs> it's, the the whole recipe is delicious. But this squirrel, for lack of, well. I want to tell you I'm nuts about it, but I know what'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's flavorful. He's out of his tree. <laughs> uh huh. That's a <laughs> bad road to get to get started on, Freddie. I know it. Mm. I know it. 
Brunswick stew. Really, this is a dish you ought to try. If you like soups, you can use small game, chicken, turkey, whatever you want. It'll taste great. And this recipe is in the March-April issue of the Outdoor Digest magazine. So where were we fishing? Well, this was off of Bridgman where we caught those browns and coho along with an occasional whitefish. For the Cook Nuclear Plant down there, that fishery will probably keep going for another week or two. Now, speaking of deer, look at this rack. This rack, Ralph Fiddler gave this rack to me to put on the set. This is a Saskatchewan buck. I went and spoke to the Saskatchewan bow hunters two weeks ago. Had a great time. You know, there's only 1,500 bow hunters in the entire province of Saskatchewan. A great group, though. No matter where you live, get outdoors if you can this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week. You know, I told you about those big walleye they're catching off Tawas. They're getting the smelt in close. I think we might try that this week. Can't guarantee it for sure, but we'll have some kind of fishing action. Maybe those walleye. That's next week right here on Public TV. Yes. <laughs> oh, be doggone, a brown trout. <laughs>